Welcome everyone, Costini here with a discussion about skills in Diablo 4 for the Rogue in the open beta. Now, obviously we don't have access to everything in the skill line in the beta because we do have a level cap of 25 and I personally didn't get as much time to play it as I would have liked. And of course we can't even see the Paragon skill line. So here's what we have. We have basic skills, core skills, agility skills, subterfuge skills, Imbunement skills, even though you can't see it there, but you can hover over there. Ultimate skills, and of course, uh, these are key passive skills. Now, let's start with the basic skills. So you get you get two melee attacks and uh, free ranged attacks. And it feels like the rogue is supposed to be like this melee range hybrid. Because, okay, you have your blade shift, which allows you to move freely through enemies for three seconds. You have your invigorating strike, which increases your energy. And your energy is used for your core skills to be able to use those core skills. So having a skill like this is pretty useful. In fact, that's exactly why I invest in it. Not for the damage it's doing, but rather to get that extra uh, energy regeneration. You can even upgrade it to get enemies vulnerable. The basic blade shift I didn't necessarily find so useful, though of course for movement it could be very powerful. Then you get puncture as a basic as a basic range skill which uh, slows enemies and uh, a critical slot uh, which uh, for every card cast can slow enemies and critical sl uh, strikes will always uh, slow. Uh, then you get heart seekers which fire uh, fires an arrow that seeks an enemy. Uh, basically like the demon hunter skills like the rogue feels like a rogue from world of warcraft and the demon hunter from diablo 3 and in in general i would say that diablo 4 from what i've played felt very much like an updated version of diablo 3 uh, it's not necessarily something everyone's going to enjoy but i do think it's good so you get heart seeker which also increases your critical strike chance against enemies when you shoot it and then of course forceful arrow which makes enemies vulnerable so uh, vulnerable enemies take 20% increased damage. And of course, you do have skills to improve all of those abilities in different ways. Then you get your core skills. So you get Barrage. People know it. Just fire a barrage of arrows that expands outward and has a have a chance to ricochet against enemies. Rapid fire. Just rapidly fire, uh, firing some arrows at the enemy. Uh, penetrating shot. Fires an arrow that pierces for all enemies in a line. Flurry, which is basically fan of knives, more or less, at an enemy. Uh, pretty good melee skill over here and twisting blades. I didn't necessarily like uh, this particular skill too much. I found it actually tricky to land it on an enemy, so I wouldn't necessarily use it too much. And then, of course, we do get two uh, two other skills over here that can buff, uh, like you can get close damage reduction, heal 1% for your uh, maximum life when you critically uh, close uh, when you're critically close to enemies so if you're close to enemies and you do a critical strike you will heal for a small amount of hp and you can increase it i guess to up to three percent critically strike an enemy also gives you movement range for starter step now moving on to agility skills we get shadow step so basically you can move through the shadows and gain increased uh, movement speed we used to have that for the demon hunter like quite a few of these skills feel like demon hunter so you'll get caltrops you get the trap and then, of course, you get the dash to just charge for enemies and deal a significant amount of damage. Like, lots of movement ability, in particular, would dash with the rogue. You're just basically dancing around the battlefield. For passive skills, we get 5% damage reduction against damage over time. Uh, you get concussive for after knocking back or, knocking, back or knocking down enemy. You get 5% uh, uh, incre increased critical strike chance for 3 seconds. Your evade cooldown is reduced by 0 0.5 seconds when you daze an enemy. Your evade bas basically being this uh, right here. And then of course you get weapon mastery that just basically gives you weapon benefits. Moving on to subterfuge skills, you get a dark shroud which basically is a cloak. Uh, you get concealment, another form of cloak. So you get two versions of, of stealth. Well, you get one version of stealth and one basically uh, damage reduction ability. I think the damage reduction might be really, really good over here. Uh, smoke grenade to uh, daze the enemies for four seconds. Poison trap, another trap. Place it, it when it activates on enemies within range, you do poison damage. And the way the rogue playstyle feels very much, you really want to debuff an, your enemy because you have a lot of skills that benefit you from debuffing them, like crowd control in any way, shape, or form. Agile gives you 
and we also then have two passive skills or two minor skills here which gives you agile using cold increases your dodge chance when stealth you heal for one percent maximum life for one second and then we have exploit you deal six percent increased damage to healthy and injured enemies and then malice you deal three percent increased damage to vulnerable enemies moving on to imbuements which are basically buffs for your weapons you get poison imbuement you get shadow imbuement and you get cold imbu imbuement pretty straightforward in terms of minor skills you get shadow crash lucky hit shadow damage has a 10 percent chance to stun for 0.5 seconds and consuming shadow each, each time you kill an enemy with shadow damage you generate 10 energy that actually seems really really powerful when you're uh, dealing with a great uh, deal of of enemy. So you do have a choice of imbuement and they do give you different effects over here. Uh, precision imbuement, skills gain percent 5%, percent, uh, five percent increased critical strike damage, deadly venom, so just buffing the venom there, and then uh, buffing the cold imbuement over, the, over here. Now for ultimates, the really good stuff. So we get shadow clone over here, we get rain of arrows, and we get Death Trap. Now, out of these three skills, I personally really prefer Ring of Arrows. It was ridiculously powerful in Diablo 3, but it depends on how they do the items, how they do the item sets. It's really too early to talk about what's really optimal. Uh, for minor skills, you get Trap Mastery, which just improves your traps. Innervation, Lucky Hit, up to 10% chance to gain energy. Alchemist Fortune, non-physical damage you deal has an increased uh, critical strike. And every 100 energy, your are you spend grants you 5% increased lucky hit chance for uh, 5 seconds. So, quite a lot of power. After using an ultimate skill, restore 25, uh, 25 energy. And adrenaline rush while moving, you gain 5% increased energy re uh, regeneration. And you can buff this uh, 3 times. Haste while, or at, while at or above 50% maximum energy, gain more movement speed. So, if you're maintaining a lot of energy, you can really, really dance across the battlefield if you're below 50 percent energy you gain increased attack speed a and after moving you with impetus you your next attack deals five percent seven percent increased damage and you can buff that three times and then finally for your key passive you so you have to decide what ultimate you're going to go for and then you have to decide what key passive you're going to go for so you get exposure while dealing, uh, dealing direct damage to an enemy affected by a trap skill, has a 25% chance to reduce the active cooldowns of your trap skills and drop the, a cluster uh, of exploding stun grenades that deal damage and stun enemies for just a very short period of time. Can be very useful to keep control of enemies. Victimize, dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has up to 30% chance to cause an explosion, dealing 23% of the original damage to them and surrounding enemies. Quite a lot of power there. So either uh, crowd control benefit, uh, AOE damage benefit, precision, critical strikes with marksman skills grant you precision. You gain 4% increased critical strike damage per stack of precision up to a maximum of uh, 20%. Really powerful skill, reminds me of the Demon Hunter over here. When you reach maximum precision, your next marksman skill is guaranteed critical strike that deals 40% increased critical strike damage and consumes all the stacks of precision. Good amount of power there. Close quarters, combat. So th this is a range skill very much, obviously. But you then get the close quarters combat benefit. So damaging close enemy with marksman or cutthroat skills gives you 10% attack speed for 8 seconds. While both attack speed bonuses are active, you deal 20% increased critical uh, increased damage against crowd control enemies. And then momentum. C cutthroat skills grant you a momentum stack for 8 seconds. If uh, they either hit the stun days or frozen enemy or hit an enemy from behind. While at 3 stacks you gain 20% increased damage reduction, 30% increased energy, and 15% increased movement. That is basically the rogue skill line. The way the skill line works is you spend points in a tree, the more uh, points you spend, the more trees you unlock. Now you don't even need to really spend points uh, in the skill to unlock uh, further tr uh, further trees you just need to spend skills in general and some stuff early on isn't necessarily going to be worth it uh, the way i see it and that's the rogue skill line very quick i know very short not necessarily a lot of detail going into this but i just thought i'd look at the rogue skill line and talk about it